lecture number eight of the inverse problems course of 2017. Uh, let's start with the standard thing, reminding you what this is all about. So, uh, we have a measurement given by some device. We uh, build a so-called continuum model uh, for the measurement process. So we have to model the device, whatever it is we use. And we build such a model that produces uh, our measurement data from uh, f, which is a function, so not, not a discrete object, it's a function, may be defined on a Euclidean space. A beautiful is an operator, uh, so this is kind of a very accurate model, maybe based on mathematical physics, like partial differential equations or something like that. And then we have the computational model. Or actually, I shouldn't say we have it, it's something we need to build for our inversion process. So there, this is a matrix vector model where M is in R K, F is in R N, and A is an K by N matrix. And the idea is that in some suitable sense, the vector F should be an approximation to this function F the A matrix should be modeling whatever this linear operator A beautiful is doing. And uh, if the F vector is a good approximation and we are working with uh, high resolution, then this vector should be close to this one. Uh, that, that's somehow the idea. The inverse problem is problem is uh, given the data m tilde find and we would love of course to really know this f beautiful that's the one we are really interested in but however that's not a finite object typically and we want to do this by computer in practical situations so actually we think it's enough to approximately find this vector f. That's somehow what we aim for. We would like to find this f. That's already pretty good if we can, if we can find a good approximation uh, for f. And then uh, we talked already a little bit uh, about naive inversion. in the case when, when n equals k, when, when the matrix A is square, uh, when n is k and uh, a, a is invertible. Namely, then we thought, uh, let's compute uh, F, let's try to compute F as A inverse times N tilde. We saw a little bit already some problems with this when working with the one dimensional deconvolution. We saw that there is a, the noise is getting amplified. And we also we saw why that is, because we wrote A in the form U D V transpose uh, the singular value decomposition and then we saw that A inverse actually equals B and then in D we have the singular values but in the inverse we have 1 over S N in the end and we saw that the problems in naive inversion come from uh, 
this final or the, the last singular value is being very small. So one over the singular value is very large. So this is multiplying the noise components. Uh, and that was the imposedness or sensitivity to noise that we saw gave us some problems. And we already took a look uh, of, of a truncated singular value uh, decomposition for the inversion, where we actually only take these guys up to some suitable point and replace the rest by zero. So that was our first robust inversion method. Today, uh, let's look a little bit what happens when A is not square, like we saw in our tomography case. Our matrix A is not square anymore. Uh, let's talk about naive inversion when, when K is larger than N. So we have, in our linear system, this one we have more equations than unknowns. So there is no way to talk about a minus 1 because actually A in the similar value decomposition we have again U, D, V transpose. This of course always exists. We have A, K by N, K by N, K by K, N by N uh, matrix. And how this looks like is uh, because K is now bigger than N, this D has such a shape and therefore so this is U, this is D and this is V. They have this kind of sizes and the singular values are along the diagonal here but the diagonal stops here and actually everything down here is just zeros. I don't know. Um, here, and also in this discussion, let's assume, assume that the singular values are really strictly positive, I mean all of them, for all j up to n, all of them are strictly positive. So then uh, we can see how to write down uh, a least squares solution uh, to, to, to try this. Uh, so solution uh, and actually let me write down uh, I just immediately write down what it is so actually now in, instead of this one instead of that one we would write F we would have A transpose A other friendly speaking with the Finnish accent so we take Ata inverse applied to A transpose M tilde. This is how naive inversion looks like uh, in this case. Why? We will take a closer look. And also in the exercises you have the uh, pleasure and, and happiness to go through some discussion, including, including a single value decomposition. Here we do uh, something a little bit different. Okay, so this is just to reveal, <laughs> this is just to immediately reveal what we are aiming at, but let's first uh, even think what is this, this uh, least square solution. So we are looking at, let's say, uh, so we would, should I use a tilde or not? I'll, I just write this way, I don't, I don't think it matters. So much, maybe. So we have a matrix equation like this. This is the k by n. So now we have more equations than unknowns. 
So um, we would like to find f such that this is zero. This is well the same thing. I just moved moved one term to the other side of the equation. This is what we really would like to have. However, it may be impossible. For example, uh, in a, in a very simple case, if if we have um, we would have linear equations um, something like. For example, something like we would have uh, such an equation and such an equation and <coughs> such an equation. So these are. <coughs> I'm not sure if, if it's a one. Uh, maybe the lecture is already starting to fall apart. Let's see how, how we can proceed. Anyway, let me, give the, let me give the definition. The minimum norm solution would be, uh, we would like to make this vector the smallest possible. This number, we would like to find vector f that makes, makes this the minimum. If we wouldn't have this assumption, there would be many uh, vectors Lm satisfying this condition. And then we would go on to define the minimum norm solution that would be the shortest one of all vectors giving the minimal error. However, uh, it turns out that when we have this assumption, uh, there will be a unique, unique uh, least square solution Lm. No, not at all. Lm, Lm is in Rn because we are multiplying it with the matrix. Okay. So this is kind of uh, so. This is what we would love to have. We would like to have some vector f that would really give zero here. But that may not be possible because we have more equations than we have unknowns. So what we aim for is instead of this being really zero, that would be uh, the optimal case, we take a look at this, the length of this vector. Because, well, if it can't be zero, then it's something else than zero. And this is some positive number then, if it's not zero. And this is something positive. And then we may ask, what is the f that would make this the smallest? I mean, this would be anyway almost as good as having this to be zero. But if we can't have that, let's ask for the next best, best thing. Uh, let's try to make this as small as possible. So we are looking at a vector uh, called Lm. Maybe it's not the best notation, but anyway, we're calling. We are looking for a vector Lm in Rn 
that would give the smallest error in solving our equation. Does it make any sense? Okay. So, and what I'm claiming is actually that this is this is Lm. What well, L M till then because L. It's this one, and somehow now the claim is that that whatever the, we define here, first of all, is this invertible at all? Can we even define this? And if we can, does this really, really uh, satisfy this? Maybe we can add the tilde here. I don't know if it makes a big difference, but anyway. So that would be the first goal today, to see why this formula will give us such uh, a least square solution for the equation. And to make the case, uh, I will first uh, I think I will show something on the computer to give you an idea what we are doing and then return with a little proof to compute here. Any questions at this point? No? Let's go to the computer then. <laughs> 